there are reasons for that. The leadership attributes of the former president have been demonstrated for all the world to see. And those dynamic qualities have enabled a remarkable feat, something that was considered impossible. That is the eradication of terrorism from this country. It was no, no mean task. Nobody in the past has been able to achieve it. And it was a combination of very rare qualities of courage, of leadership, relentless pursuit of a goal. These are the things that made possible uh, this triumph over terrorism, which has not been achieved by far larger countries with far larger resources elsewhere in the world. Now there is a need for those same qualities to resist another threat. That is the revival of the LTTE in different forms. Not by the use of arms, not by having recourse to war, but other methods which are equally devastating. And there is plenty of evidence of this kind of renewed activity on the part of the LTTE through the diaspora in many regions of the world. And today there is the acknowledgement that the same qualities of leadership so amply demonstrated by former President Rajapaksa, which made possible this historic victory in war, now those same qualities are required in a different environment for the protection of the vital <laughs> interests of this country. It is also a very important consideration that the economy of this country is also in peril. So there are two major challenges today. One is a threat to national security. The other is a threat to the national economy. During the six months which uh, the present government has been in power, our, our foreign reserves, the country's foreign reserves have, have fallen from 8.5 billion US dollars to 6.5 billion US dollars, 2 billion, 2 billion US dollars have been lost during the short period that this government has been in office. Uh, my colleagues referred to the most colossal fraud in the history of this country, the central bank bond issue. Uh, I have written on behalf of uh, all of us uh, to the uh, Secretary of the Treasury and the Governor of the Central Bank protesting against an equally objectionable loan of uh, 500 million US dollars uh, which was launched by the present government on the very day that parliament was dissolved. On the very day that parliament was dissolved, uh, this particular transaction has commenced. Uh, that is against uh, Sri Lanka's laws. It's against the Fiscal Responsibility Act. And these are matters that uh, the people of our country are very concerned about. So, yes. And uh, the governor of the central bank has left the country suddenly, unexpectedly. And these are matters which uh, need to be addressed. Uh, the COPE report was to be presented to Parliament. Parliament was dissolved. Uh, and uh, we are certainly eager to pursue those matters in the new Parliament. So today is an important milestone. It is a very significant milestone in the campaign which began with the Nugegoda rally. And uh, today marks uh, a momentous event uh, which uh, guarantees, which virtually guarantees uh, the victory of the UPFA uh, led by the SLFP uh, at the forthcoming general elections. Uh, I also want to thank the um, uh, members of provincial councils and the members of Pradeshi Sabhas who played a very important role uh, in taking this forward up to this point. And we also wish to thank uh, His Excellency President uh, Maitripal Sirisena as the leader of the UPFA for this gesture. Uh, in um, authorizing the General Secretary of the UPFA to release this statement today, making it crystal clear that former President Mahindra Rajapaksa will be contesting this election under the banner of the UPFA.